started. Um, so first things first, I'm going to start with an LED, lighting that up on the Arduino board. So what I currently have set up is, well my current setup is I have the breadboard, the Arduino, and a whole assortment of various sized wires. So the first thing you do when getting the Arduino hooked up for an LED is you gotta set up these on the side here. So these bars are essentially connected. So if you plug into any one of these, it'll connect to every single thing all the way down. So what we normally do for this is this is how we power the Arduino. So I'm gonna take white for positive and a nice um, black for negative, kind of a uh, oxidation, I guess. And the black is gonna go to the ground on Arduino, so if you look looking down on it, or if you look on this side, the ground is up here, and also on the other side down here. So I'm going to use the one up here right now. So that white is going to go into that ground, and or the black is going to go into the ground, and the white one is going to go to the pin 13 next to it. So the pin, so that's the setup. So pin 13 has a built-in resistor which we can use to essentially power our LED without blowing it out right off the bat. So now I'm going to take the LED. Notice how it has two prongs. One's longer, one's shorter. The longer prong is going to correspond to the positive side, and the shorter prong is going to correspond to the negative side on the lengthwise bar. So I'm plugging into the 12 and 13 crossbars on the breadboard, sorry, like so. So when plugging up these shorter bars here, they cross themselves this direction versus plugging up this bar here, which is this way. So anything I plug into 13 is going to correspond to everything else on 13, and everything on 12 is going to correspond with everything else on 12. So to wire up this Arduino then, I'm going to take bar 13 and connect it to the positive uh, larger lengthwise bar and I'm going to take 12 hook it up to the negative side and it should look like this right now and by the way we're already hooked up for an LED so next thing is to start it so what we need to do is first tell the Arduino that something is outputting on pin 13, which is where we put the white. So we're going to write pin node 13, and then we're going to write a comma, and then we're going to say output and semicolon. So essentially we're just telling the pin 13 to output. Next we're going to say, OK. Um, we need to turn up the voltage to essentially make the LED light up. So we're going to write, uh, we're going to have a digital output, so digital write, 13, and high, so that sets the voltage to high, and low, and then we're going to go on to say LED function. Okay, and I'm going to have a quite quick delay of, I don't know, like, milliseconds so one second so I can have a blink and then have a digital write 13 again I'm going to tell it to now turn the voltage to low which turns off the LED and another quick quick delay of a thousand milliseconds so here if we look we have a what we're doing is the setup code runs once as it says right here and what we're the pin mode is just going to be set each once and then from there, you can run this loop repeatedly over and over and over again. So here we go. Upload it. And you can see I have my blinking LED. 
do this. multipolar LED, so you notice instead of just the two, it has four. Each one corresponds to, well, three of them correspond to a different color, and then we have the ground going out of the one. So what I can do is I can just take that same position as it was before and plug the two in below it. And without changing any code, it already starts the same thing, same color. take another one of these white ones and plug it across on 14. And bring it across the negative side. It's going to run red. So we have something that can already change color. Bring it to the other side. There's a lot more that can be done with something like this where you have a lot of variability. So that's kind of how you do quick LEDs in Arduino. However, next we're going to run servo, so movement, which is what a lot of Arduinos are used for is movement in general. So here I got a little handy dandy servo. And if you notice outputting on it, three wires. These wires correspond to something. So over here, I have a bunch of zips. I have these so I can plug into the Arduino. And I have the brown, which is for ground. The middle orange is for the 5 volt power supply to it. And the yellowish is for the signal. So when running this, you're going to have a constant power across it. And then the signal dictates how you use it. So black is I'm going to plug into the same ground slot we did before. The white I'm actually going to plug into the 5 volt power on the other side. And then the yellow I'm going to plug into the bigger pin number 9. So I guess to show you what that looks like right now. So breadboard for this one since you can hook it up directly it's a little bit faster but to hook up to a breadboard you would just take the um, the 5 volt hook it up to the plus side of the breadboard and you take the ground plug it to the ground and then you can plug the signal in to the board or you can plug it to a, one of the horizontal rows and run it from there but I have it hooked up this way so for that Code up a little bit. Oops. So, first thing we need to do is include the servo package. So, we're telling it that, hey, we need something that doesn't automatically come on the Arduino. So, so include servo. And then from there, we're going to say we're going to create a, create a servo object. So, servo. Servo colon, and then first thing we're, I'm going to do is make in a global variable uh, called position, and then we're going to set that to zero. And what that allows us to do, essentially, set a starting point for this um, for the servo to run with. So when it's all the way in one direction, we're going to call it zero. When it's all the way in the other direction, we're going to call it 180. And that's actually the most current you can get out of most servos is 180 degrees. So we're going to essentially be running it with degrees. So set that up. We're going to we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to say my servo dot cat. And we're going to do it pin nine since that's where we put it this time. What that has done is we've set up the servo so that it knows which pin to modulate the signal to. Next, we're going to run the loop portion where we're going to turn the 
between the servo back and forth. So I'm going to write a quick, the easiest way to do this is quick for loop. So for system is 0, system dot system is 3, 180. So we're going from 0 to 180 degrees. And then, so then you're going to change the position by 1 degree each time. We're going to, in this, now we have to essentially move the servo in this loop. So I'm going to say that is, that that function is my servo dot write. So write and then break the position. So it's going to change to whatever position we've indicated each time. And offset the little delay so we don't make the servo run too quickly. So now we kind of just have to make the servo turn back to where it was. So let's just go system 180. So, oops, wrong one. So we've done is just gone from 180 back to zero, changed everything by one each time. And we're gonna do the same function right position and a quick delay to make sure we run the servo. Cool. So local dot set right. So let's export this export to Arduino and now look. It should be moving back and forth. Cool. So now we're gonna go over some of the cool things that you can use with an Arduino. So here we have four sensing resistors. So a lot of times if you want to, you can use these essentially as um, buttons or something like that. Or if you want to have something that weighs something, these actually are what you essentially, you can use for a decent weight resist um, resistor. So what happens is by pressing on this, you change the resistance of it and you can measure the resistance of the Arduino actually by using these analog pin pins right here. I'm not going to go over that in this video, but that is something you can look into. This is a potentiometer, so it changes the resistance by this dial right here that switches back and forth. And that's another one where you would essentially input into that analog in pin and measure the resistance, or you would measure your voltage and that difference in voltage can tell you where to turn to. Um, here I've got a little nice buzzer, so if you want it to have a nice little obnoxious buzz, you can actually hook that up right now. So if you notice again, it has one of those longer and shorter pins, so it's really easy to differentiate. So I'm plugging mine into the 12 pin 15 slot. So positive in 12, down 15, and essentially the same setup as an LED. So put up the exact same way. And I can actually just go back. But if I can go straight back to the LED code we had, it should be the exact same thing. Oh, it doesn't go back further. Okay, well, I'll just write it out again. Or real quick, so I can just do that. semicolons, never forget semicolons, that is a huge problem sometimes. So now we have a nice little buzzer, I guess you can hear that more than see it. 
Yeah, so that's a small intro into visually outputting to an Arduino, which is really useful for many tasks that you do where you need especially movement with the servos and motors. So Handy Dandy MLH kit will have probably some small motors. You can get a servo from them. Uh, I don't think anyone with a hardware kit is going to start running without a servo. So those are your bread and butter for making active movement and it's kind of where we've gone so far. So that's our introduction to the digital part of Arduino. Okay, it's now it's been 10 hours again um, doing Arduino talk. So last thing we covered was the digital side. So when you have the computers, ones and zeros, which is really useful for doing things like um, like turning on LED, using a servo, running a buzzer, um, that's pretty useful. For heavy machinery, you want to use something with more variability. That's when you use some, hey, a potentiometer. So what happens here is when you turn this knob, it changes the resistance on the middle pin. So you see that these three pins right here. So the top pin, you're going to put a voltage across, and then the bottom, you're gonna, you're, so you're going to have your 5 volt on the top, your ground on the bottom, and then in the middle, you can measure out a variable voltage because of the resistance. So the easiest way to test, to, to really show the how the analog pin works, is for me to kind of just wire this up into the um, with the middle section on the analog pin, and then we'll actually get to see what the voltage is over this um, over this pin. So real quick, I'm just going to take these three wires. So the white's going to be our five volt, black's going to be our ground, and the orange is actually going to be our signal, and that goes into the a0 pin on the analog board, or uh, the Arduino board. So now I have these three in here. And I'm going to wire it up real quick. So let's see here, where do I put it? And right there you kind of see how we have the thing wired up. So orange in the middle, white and black on the side for the uh, potentiometer, and how it's meant marked up on this board. Oops, that's the wrong one. So, yep. And now we need to just um, figure a way to measure it using the Arduino. And that's pretty easy, so we can just go over to Arduino um, sketch over here. And first thing we need to write is the serial.begin1900. So what that tells is how often you should be printing, or essentially you should be printing your serial monitor, which is, I guess, your uh, whatever you would output to an Arduino. And then easy enough here is to read an, um, an analog, you just need to say, oops. So what we're gonna do is first pull the raw data values. So the data value runs from zero to 1023, each increment representing uh, increment between zero and five volts. So zero representing zero and 1023 representing five volts. So you get a pretty good estimate of what your actual voltage is using this pin. So we're just going to say temperature value. So the first thing we've done is we're going to read our analog pin A0 and see what the voltage is for that. And we're going to do some fancy stuff here. So we're just going to say um, short voltage. doing here is taking the 5 volts, which is what our max is, and dividing by 1023, so we end up with an approximate value of what the voltage is in the middle. And then we're just going to say serial dot print in in voltage. So we're just going to print out to our serial monitor. And we're going to put a little delay in here. A quick one of just a hundred milliseconds so you guys are going to actually see what happens without any problem. So there we are. Now let's just wire this pin out a little bit now that I'm not buttered in. So in this case, you if you do this in a project, you'd like to solder in the wires so that you can actually get a nice firm connection. So we'll just load it up. Oh, what is that? That is semicolon. I have a semicolon here. I forgot it. Don't forget your semicolons. 
that's the left is below. Upload it and open the stream monitor here. And oh look, went from five and I think a little bit three and a half. And that goes all the way down, or that goes all the way up to five. You can turn it back the other direction. You get stable values and that. This one is modulating because the wires have been touching each other. Well, my fingers are touching them and they're a little bit sweaty, so they keep on making electrical contact and change the resistance. But as you can see, most of the time when I do it, it changes with when I turn it. Let's see if I can get a stable enough here. Yep, there it is. And that kind of gives us a nice little way to change what our resistance is with just a nice little knob thing. So what is this useful for? It, let's say if you're using this to run a light bulb or um, you really want to just uh, or learn how loud something is. So if we use this buzzer again, or the same kind of buzzer we had last time, um, you can actually change how loud it is because its, loud, um, it's noise output is based on the voltage. The LED on the other hand can change a little bit in brightness, um, not very much, but it'll change a little bit brightness wise based on how much voltage you have to process. The biggest thing that this is useful for is actually motors. So I have a little motor over here. And last time we went over how servos work and the servo can um, do the same thing. But if you were to modulate a little motor like this, you can actually change the speed at which it turns because motors are related, to the speed is related to voltage effectively. And that gives you kind of a little bit of a toolkit to run with. So you can input this value and you can actually even run things with it. Let's say you wanted to run an LED um, when the voltage goes over a certain amount. So you turned it into a switch of some sort. So in which case, I won't have the wiring diagram for it, but if you say if voltage is greater than three, then you could just do your, uh, or you could just do your digital out pin of, and, or you could even do your, um, your servo is based on that, so you could do it to what degree, so let's just modulate this voltage, let's see if it's better, yep, yeah. case we're just going to modulate that you can actually change the location of the servo and you can just do so we can go from five to say about here This should essentially just change the uh, position of your servo based on what your voltage is. And yeah, pretty cool. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me over on Facebook um, or email me at alexc at 10x.com with questions if you have any. Thanks guys.